All right, so in our first tutorial, we got our paddle set up and we got it moving. We also created some boundaries so that it would stay in the screen. It's time to make this into a much more interesting game by adding a ball and handling its movement and collision. Let's get started. So first thing we're gonna do is actually add the ball. So let's head over to our hierarchy where we can right click, create a 2D object, and we're gonna make a square sprite. We'll use our rect tool to get this about the right size. Now you may be thinking, but Matt, it's not a ball, it's a square, and you're not wrong. But I want my game to be as close to the original breakout as possible, which had a pixelated square ball. If you want a circular one, go ahead and knock yourself out. Now we're just going to go into our sprite render and give this some color so we can see it a little better. I'm also going to add a circle collider 2D. I'm going to use a circle one because it will give the ball some nicer physics as it's bouncing off the paddle. I also like to click Edit Collider and just make it so that this one is a little larger than the shape itself. That way if there's any near misses on the paddle, the ball will still detect that it's hit the paddle, which makes the player feel a little more successful and gets rid of that frustration of just barely missing. Next up, we're going to add a Rigid Body 2D, which will just add physics to our ball. We can then hit Play and we'll see that, well, nothing too exciting happens, but we've added gravity. So let's head back out, click on our ball, which I will rename to actually be called ball. And then we're going to head into our rigid body 2D component. Now in here, there's a couple things we want to do. First of all, let's remove gravity. We're going to do that simply because we don't want the ball to always be pulled down toward earth. Instead, we want it to move as though it's moving on like a ping pong table. Next, we're going to click constraints. We're going to freeze our Z position, which will keep the ball from rotating funny as it is spinning through the air and give us a more breakout like appearance. Now we're going to add one more component, but this one we have to make for ourselves. So we can right click down at the bottom of the screen here, create 2D, and we're going to make a physics material. Make sure that you get the 2D one. We're going to call this bouncy. And then over in the inspector here, we're just going to take off all friction and full bounciness one. We can now open up our rigid body on the ball and here where it says material, you can click the little circle and add bouncy. Now if I were to turn gravity back on, this is what bouncy would do. It just makes the ball continually go up and down without ever losing any velocity. Now we've just got one last thing to do before we get coding and that is we're gonna click on our player. And in the last tutorial, we added a box collider 2D. The problem with this is that the ball will always go straight up and we won't have the ability to send the ball off at an angle by hitting it differently with our paddle. So we're going to remove that box collider 2D and put a polygon collider 2D in its place. We're then going to click edit collider and just make some slight changes making this a little more hexagonal so that we can hit the ball at a different angle depending on which side of the paddle hits it. I also like to extend mine just a little extra on the sides. This again just gets rid of that frustration factor for the player and allows them even on a near miss to still uh, hit the ball. And you really won't notice anything graphically. It'll feel pretty natural. Right, with that done, we are now ready to get coding and we wanna code the ball itself. So let's head down to our project window here where you can right click, create C-sharp script. And I'm gonna call this one ball controller. All right, before we actually get into the script, I wanna click on the ball to go to add component and we're going to add the ball controller right now. now there are four things that we want to do in this script the first is we're going to set the initial speed of our ball secondly we're going to want to clamp the max speed which will just make sure that the ball doesn't speed up indefinitely so that the game becomes impossible to make it more fun we also want to set a minimum speed that way the ball doesn't get trapped in a corner where it moves very very slowly and finally, we want to create a reset position so that if the ball gets too low on the screen underneath the paddle, it resets back to the beginning. With that done, we're gonna to need to head to the top of our script and declare a couple of variables. The first one is we're going to need a reference to our rigid body. This is what's gonna allow us to set the velocity of the ball. And just as we did in our player script, we're going to code this script to find that component on its own. So you can head down into the start method Type in ball rb is equal to, and we're just going to use a get component call so that the script will search the game object, find a rigid body, and automatically fill that slot. While we're here, let's add the rest of our variables. We're going to make a public float, which will be our minimum speed, and we'll just keep the ball from going too slow at any point. We'll also add another public float for our max speed. We're making these public so that we can play with them in the inspector. And then we'll add one final variable, which will be another public float called min y. And this just refers to the lowest y point that the ball can go to before it knows it's out of bounds and then respawns. 
We can now set our initial ball speed by talking to our rigid body, so we'll type ball RB, and we're going to set its velocity to be equal to a new vector 2, which is just an xy value. We don't want the ball to move left or right, so we'll set our x to 0, and our y will simply be negative min speed, and negative because we want it to move downward, not upward. In Unity, we can do some testing already. If I add a minimum speed, let's say 5, to our ball and then press start, we'll see that at the beginning the ball automatically moves downward at that speed. Next up, we're ready to clamp our max speed so the ball does not speed up indefinitely. To do this, we'll talk to our ball's rigid body again. We're going to look at its velocity, but this time we want to look at the magnitude of its velocity. Magnitude is just a measurement that measures the length of a vector, and so it's going to be helpful here. And we want to make sure that that magnitude is not greater than our max speed. And to be honest, I should have used max to velocity here to be more accurate, and so I'm just going to quickly change my speed values to velocity. All right, and with that done, we just want to make sure that if the ball's velocity exceeds that magnitude, we just want to clamp it. So we're going to type in ball rigid dot velocity is going to be set to a vector 2 of clamp magnitude, which is just going to make sure that the magnitude of the ball never exceeds a given value. In our brackets, then, we'll just tell it what it is we want to limit, our velocity, a comma, and then the value we want to limit it to. Back in Unity, we can again set our min velocity to 5. Maybe let's set our max to 10. There's not going to be a lot to see here. However, you'll notice as the ball speeds up, it will get clamped down so that it can't continue to speed up. So next up, we want to set our ball's minimum speed, simply because the game gets really boring if the ball gets trapped in a corner and is just puttering along. So to do this, we're going to check first of all to see if the ball's rigid body's velocity's magnitude is less than our minimum velocity, which is just the value we set up above. So if it's moving too slow, we're going to do one of two things. First of all, if the ball's moving down, we want to set it to have its minimum speed in a downward direction. And we can do that by checking if the velocity dot y, so its up-down value, is less than zero. If it is, it's moving down. Then we can set its velocity to be equal to a new vector 2. Now we want its x to say the same. If it's moving right, we want it to continue to do that. So we'll just type ball rb dot velocity dot x. And its y value is just going to be a negative version of our min velocity, meaning it'll move downward. Now, if the ball's moving upward, so if its velocity dot y is greater than zero, we'll do essentially the exact same thing, except that now we're going to check if the value is greater than zero, and we'll use a positive min velocity. Now, the last thing we're going to add here is just a quick reset of the ball's position if it goes out of bounds. So if our ball goes too far downward, we want to make sure that it gets reset back to the center of the screen. So another if statement here. And we're just going to check to see if the transform.position.y, so its up down value, becomes ever less than our minimum y value. We just want to reset it. So in that case, we would make transform.position of the ball. We're just going to make it equal to, and Unity has a shortcut for this. We're going to type in vector2.0 which should be the exact center of your screen. If for some reason in your game you've not set things up in the very center and you need to change those values, you could instead make this a new vector 2. And then in brackets, just put your value. So if you need it to be 5 on the x and 10 on the y, you could set those values here. All right, so to figure out how to set our minimum y value, I'm just going to grab my move tool and move the ball down to where I want to be out of bounds. So essentially, if the ball gets to this point here, which is below the screen, which is a negative, roughly a negative 5. That's when I want it to get reset, so I'll make my min y negative 5. So things are mostly working really nicely now. The ball will never go slower than 5 or faster than 15, but there's one problem in that when it goes out of bounds, it maintains its sideways velocity, and we need to fix that. So in our code, along with setting the ball's position, we also need to set its velocity. We'll do that by telling its rigid body's velocity to be equal to a new vector 2. And all we want to do is make sure that our x value is a 0, so that it moves straight down, not sideways. And then our y value will just be our min velocity. And we want to make sure this is negative, that way it's moving downwards. With that done, things should be working nicely now with the ball moving around and then respawning in the center of the screen, going straight downward after a miss. All right, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have, please be sure to click like or to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.